Now, I will tell you in full transparency, the angle that I'm coming at it with from this video is from the outsider perspective, fan perspective, observer perspective, what have you. And that could be a little bit disconnected from the kind of like business and promotional reality, right? So I fully acknowledge that. But I'm sorry, this two-hour AEW collision show on Saturday feels like a really bad idea. Bad, 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 bad. And you're going to say, well, why is that? I will explain. Now, first, I will call out that from a business standpoint, this is a great thing for AEW, at least in the short term, especially from a monetary standpoint. If you have Warner Brothers Discovery ready to invest another two hours of primetime uh, TV time into your product, that means they're pleased with you, at least to some extent. And if you believe the reports from Meltzer, and when it comes to specifics like this that are going to make AEW look really good, you could kind of believe them, right? Like if it's things that you would say, well, it could make AEW shine in a bad light, you know, you know Meltzer's going to spin you and bullshit you the other way. But if he's talking about, you know, it's 500000 a week per hour of television time, like if that's true, you talk about AEW with a two-hour show every Saturday night in prime time, is going to bring in an additional 50 plus million dollars in television revenue for this. And while in theory, you would say, well, Tony Khan, isn't he supposed to be a billionaire? Why would that matter so much? I mean, money's money. That is a significant increase in overall revenue for this company. How could it not be? So just from that standpoint alone, it would be a massive success. It would also give another opportunity for AEW to have two hours of primetime television, a chance to be able to showcase more talent, to be able to have greater exposure. While I'm not a big fan of that day and time slot necessarily, you'll, you'll take it, right? Even if you say, well, what if it's just another rampage but it's two hours long and it sucks even harder? And they still get 500,000 people to watch that show every week and the network's paying them 500,000 an hour each week for it. I, you can fucking deal with it, right? <laughs> you know, and for a company that has a roster that, in my opinion, is way too big, you know, you want to get these guys some experience and you want to mix stuff up and you want to, you know, not feel like you always have to jam everything into Dynamite on Wednesday night and then Rampage. Like, yeah, maybe this makes sense. Um, so from a business standpoint, I can see it. But outside of that, this feels like a really bad, dumb, stupid idea, especially when you think about the reports of what is driving this, is that the network really wants CM Punk back. And part of them giving this two hours of TV time on Saturday night was so that CM Punk and Team Punk, you know, whoever would be willing to work with or want to work with CM Punk on that show, would go do this Saturday night show and then the elite could be left in charge of dynamite on Wednesday nights. Wow. That feels really bad. That feels like a lack of institutional authority and control by Tony Khan. Because if you've got to go to these lengths to sit there and create an excuse to bring one of your biggest stars under contract back into the fold in CM Punk. And no matter how much people may not like CM Punk, and I'm not a huge fan of him myself. He's a jackass and a crybaby, frankly. But in terms of like his box office importance to AEW, the eyeballs that he draws on the product, you can't pretend like he's not one of their biggest draws. That's just fucking delusional to pretend like he's not. So whatever pathway or avenue you can find to bring him back in, I totally understand that. But to basically say he can't get along with the elite and or the elite can't get along with him and they don't want to fucking work together. So instead of forcing everybody to sit down and say, this is about business, put your petty childish pussy bullshit off to the side and let's do business and get over our fucking selves and our little crybaby emotions and egos. We're just going to split them off so we don't have to fucking worry about it. 
oh, I'm sure that's going to land swimmingly with the locker room. And as much as you say, well, there are some people in that locker room that don't want CM Punk back. I'm sure it is. There are some people in that locker room that don't like the freaking elite either. That also can be true and is true. I'm sure of it. But what's going to happen is people are going to lose respect for Tony Khan because instead of addressing the issue and establishing his authority and being the boss in fucking charge, he sat there and basically is capitulating and trying to avoid the conflict. And that never pays off. It just doesn't. But even beyond those types of concerns here, there's also the concern of does AEW really have enough of an audience, enough of an established customer base, enough interest for their product to where they could support another two hours of primetime television every Saturday night. You know, not only the fact that if you're talking about being on Saturday night, you know, that's, that's a bad time slot to be on. It really is. You know, whether you're talking about the NBA playoffs now or you're talking about, you know, freaking baseball season, you're talking about she gets a college football season. It's just not good, right? There's a reason you don't want to put some of your best, you know, cable TV programming on Saturday nights. You just don't. There's a reason for that. People want to go out. They do shit. They watch pay-per-views for like UFC or other shit. So that feels like kind of a death slot right there. And now you're going to put not one, but two hours of programming there a night. I'm assuming at this moment, I'm assuming nothing else changes. After an hour of rampage on Friday night and two hours of dynamite a couple of days before that on Wednesdays. So just there, not even counting ROH and Dark and all this other content that AEW puts out there. Can they really support that much wrestling every week? Like one of the big complaints we have about WWE, and this is AEW, we're not talking about WWE, I understand that. But I'm saying you can learn from others. And to me, one of the problems with WWE is they have too much fucking content. And you can get to the point of you got Raw on Monday night, you got NXT on Tuesday nights, and then you got freaking SmackDown on Friday nights. It's a little bit better in terms of things being spaced out than what it was. However, you could get to the point where, say, I can't watch all of this shit, and eventually you say, well, if I'm missing some of it, it probably doesn't make any difference if I miss all of it, so I'm not just going to watch any of it at all. That certainly makes sense, right? If you're not able to emotionally invest in all of it, you might emotionally invest in none of it. But eventually what you do is you burn your damn audience out. And WWE certainly has done that with their television viewers. Certainly has. You look at Monday Night Raw, three hours every week is too goddamn much. And they get killed in that third hour. And for me, I look at, and no offense here, but most weeks Dynamite loses what, like, 20 to 30% of their fucking audience coming off of the beginning of the show with the Big Bang lead-in until you get to the main event segment, they're losing 20 to 30% of their goddamn audience every week as it is. They can't even master the flagship show. I don't mean that as an insult. I mean looking at the fucking numbers. They can't manage that. Rampage hasn't exactly been a rousing success from a viewership standpoint. And now you want to layer on not one more hour, but two more hours on a Saturday night? And I could be missing something. Maybe Rampage would go away. But I didn't think they were talking about it going away. Like just three shows right there, five hours of content for AEW. And you could say, well, they, they, their fan base is so hardcore and ravenous that they could support it. If that's the case, then why don't they support an hour of Rampage every Friday more? Well, it's not as good. Well, shit, half the time Dynamite ain't damn good, but a lot more people watch Dynamite on Wednesday nights than they do Rampage on Friday nights. Well, it's on Friday night. And if it meant that much to people, they would find a way to fucking put other stuff off so they could watch Rampage at 10 o'clock. Am I wrong? No. So this it just feels like this is stretching yourself too thin. If this happens and this is true, and if you're talking about starting like June and July or some shit, like I'm trying to keep as caught up as I can be. And I could be speaking out of turn here because I could have missed some other stuff transparently, but I'm meaning to talk about this for a couple days. But 
I said, from an outsider, an observer standpoint, a fan standpoint, this just feels like a really, really bad idea. Because for to me, a guy like Tony Khan, who I feel like has already stretched a little too thin, now he's going to be stretched even thinner. And now what you're doing, instead of taking your best and your brightest from your roster overall and putting them all together on one show and just you know, really focusing on featuring the best of the best. Now you're splitting up a roster, frankly, needs to be reduced by quite a bit overall. Now you're splitting them up and you're kind of diluting your own product. It just doesn't feel like a recipe for success. I'm sorry, it doesn't. This feels like a bad idea for everybody involved outside of the initial boost in terms of revenue. And if you're pumping that up, you're like, yeah, that's not an insignificant thing. But all you ever hear about is how Tony Khan is a fucking billionaire. Right? That's what you hear about. His net worth's in the billions. So why in the hell would $50 million a year make any damn difference? It would be just a drop in the bucket otherwise. Shit, at this point, you want to save $50 million a year, you might as well t get Kenny Omega out of the fucking video game business. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Like, if they do this, I hope it works out for them. It'd be good for them to have CM Punk back in the fold. But goddamn, it sure feels like it's a recipe for potential disaster for this company.